Hey folks, just doing a quick video on Keppel, which is a project I've been working on for about three or four months now. Um, it's got some fairly hefty long-term goals, which I won't go into now, uh, but what I've been concentrating on up till recently is just making OpenGL nice to play with. Um, unfortunately, OpenGL is an API with two distinct paradigms, the old fixed function pipeline, and then the new style, which is all based around shaders, vertex objects, arrays, and all that kind of jazz. Um, Keppel very much focuses on the second in the hope that by limiting the scope it can create better abstractions on top of these and really seeks to make it a lispy library, something that feels very native and it's very easy to experiment from the REPL. So we have a very simple example here on the left, so I'm just going to compile that and then run the run demo function and we should have a wee triangle. Right, so this is your typical first OpenGL demo, you get a triangle with some colours up on the screen. Um, sorry about the low resolution, by the way, I'm just trying to make this you know, filmable at any decent frame rate. Now, if you're using OpenGL from a language that isn't C++ or C, you're going to be working with foreign data. And so we've got some helper functions around that. Up here, lets you define a foreign struct. This struct will be useful for not only the C side of things, but for actually data on the GPU as well. We'll see how that works soon. Um, the structs also work for the shaders, but we'll get back to that soon. So when we run the demo, it creates a GL array, which again is just a foreign array with some extra helpers around it, um, using the contents of Lisp data, which is up here. So these are the positions and colors. So that's, whoops. B for position, C for color, of our vertices. The contents of this are then pushed to a GPU array, so it makes a GPU array from the GL array. And that is analogous to buffers in OpenGL. So you should be able to do here, as you can see, the REPL still works while the demo runs. So what we should be able to do is look at the GPU array. which is there, and we can also pull the contents back. Now glbull pull has a partner function called glpush, so if we take this data here and push it back, we'll see no effects because we didn't change anything, but let's say we change this color to zero. So you can see a slight effect up there, It'd be more dramatic if I actually change a position, so there we go. Change it back to how it was. And let's put this back to how it was as well. Okay, so we have direct access to the memory on the GPU. We can push it and pull it as we like. To render this, you have to create a stream. If you've been working with OpenGL before, that's like a vowel with a length. So I'll go into more detail on this stuff in another video, but that sets it up here. Now, I'm well aware that all these um, dynamic variables are pretty unlispy, but just for the sake of this, it makes things much easier to look at what's going on. Okay, so the draw function is called every single loop. This is our main loop down here. In the draw function, we clear the screen and then we call prog1. Now, prog1 is a function which represents our shader pipeline, so that the code that's running on the GPU, as you can see, all this is lisp code. Uh, because one of the problems I struck into very early on was when I was trying to solve a problem, I'd start working out the solution in my head and then realize that it needed to, a lot of it needed to be in a shader. At that point, you've got to translate the work you've done into a different language, and that breaks your flow. Uh, this got annoying enough that the obvious solution was to write a translator. So this is what this is up here. Uh, Def Pipeline will take Lisp code, translate it into GLSL, and then compile it and send it off to the GPU as a program. If we want to see what code this creates, what we can do is take def pipeline and just stick a question mark in the name, and it'll spit out the code that it compiles to. So this is all it does. It's a pretty simple shader at this point. One of the nice things with OpenGL is because it compiles shaders into, and links them into programs at runtime, um, it's really easy for us to use a couple of macros to make this just look like 
native Lisp code doing its normal thing with our incremental compiler. This becomes really nice because we can copy and paste code to and from shaders and expect it to work with very little change. Um, also with our incre incremental compiler, if I could still speak, sorry about the uh, raspy voice by the way, I'm just getting over a cold. We can make some really hefty changes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add an extra uh, variable here. And let's just stick zero in it for now. In fact, it's going to be a float, just to remind myself that. Okay, we've compiled that. Up here, I've got a uniform variable available to my shaders, uh, which is called offset, but I don't actually use it yet, so I should use it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our offset onto uh, the position of each vertex. Because offset is just a vector 2, we need to make sure they're compatible vectors. So let's turn it into a vector 4. Now there's no visible change yet, but what we should be able to do now is go down here and use our uniform variable offset. This uh, V exclamation mark means make a vector of the size that's dependent on the number of arguments. So here this is a vector 2, this will be a vector 3. As you can see, we're now able to move the triangle around using our offset. One thing we could do is we could set loop pass to be incremented over time. That should work. And now if we look at oops, loop pass, it should be climbing steadily. We could use that for our position. Oops, I'm forgetting how to type. If we take the sign of loop pos, oh, I'm forgetting completely how to type. Now we can change the position of our triangle quite quickly. And obviously it's quite simple to turn this into a circle. Now, if I decide that triangle is too big, I could change the data on the list slide and push it back up to the CPU, or we could just, you know, multiply the position of the vertex itself. So let's do that. So we'll create a new vector 4, which is 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 1.0. And now we've got a little triangle. And what if I wanted lots of triangles? Then we could just create a loop. So loop for i below, let's make 20 of them. And then we'll draw this. And I think this should be based on, let's just add i to loop pos. Oops, not there. It'd be interesting to see what effect it would have, actually. So we might move this in a second. Way there we go. So we've got a circle of them now. Now, what if sine was tan? That's pretty cool. What if both of them were tan? Oh, that's boring. What if this was cos? OK. Let's turn this back to sine for a second. What if this whole thing was tan? That's weird. Because I assume we get as much as we would expect. We can just start playing with this now. There's really no concern of what happens. Even if we break it, when we compile it, we get the error. But thanks to this little guy down here, continuable, if I didn't just scribble it out, there it is. It gives us this little option continue, so all we have to do is go and find the mistake we made, undo it, compile again, and then say continue, and everything's back to how it was. This isn't really news to people who do Lisp, but it's so handy for just generally playing around with OpenGL to not worry about whether something's going to break. It's really nice. Oh, that's cool. I'm keeping that. And one of the things you can do is just play irreverently. And if it turns out something's cool, then go back and read your code and work out how it works. And if it's nice, you know, save it as a template, some kind of code recipe to use another day. You can come up with some surprisingly elegant little things which take very little CPU time to run just by messing around. Anyway, 
Um, I'm losing my voice, so I'm going to stop recording now, and I'll come back in a day or so with some more little things, and showing the same principle in 3D, and going through this hopefully in some more detail. Hope you like. Take care.